Brian Fisher. Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point. I ever thought Brian Fisher is my name. You are listening to Focal Point, ethanol-free radio right here on American Family Radio Talk Network. And we're honored and pleased to welcome to our decision maker line, Sandy Rios. She has a talk program of her own right here on the AFR Talk Network, which you can hear in the morning. I often listen to Sandy on my way into work, and Sandy has been at CPAC. Sandy, uh, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Sandy, can you hear me? You know what? <laughs> I can now. I apologize, Brian. I'm at the airport, as you can hear. Yes, I I'm at Reagan National, and uh, the man decided to talk just when I was supposed to talk. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing just fine. So do you have a couple of minutes to chat, or do you need to get on your plane? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. It's just that it's just a noisy place. It's Fridays in D.C. are just, just like crazy. a zoo. And, well, and, uh, n- and this plane is delayed, and so uh, there are so many people around. And, in fact, uh, Senator David Vitter is on the plane with us. At least he will be. All right, so, cool. Uh, well, yeah. and it's probably it's just probably that sequester, uh, Sandy. That's what it is. It's those mean, <laughs> evil Republicans not providing enough money for you to get out, get those planes off on time. So. I, I'm sure it is. It's probably just because Senator Bitter's on, and because we are. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sandy, you've been at uh, CPAC, and I've just got a couple of questions uh, for you. We played some sound bites from there, excerpts from Rand Paul's beat yesterday, Marco Rubio, uh, Alan West, uh, Rick Perry. I know Paul Ryan spoke today. I think Mitt Romney's going to speak tonight. Bobby Jindal uh, speaking today sometime. And uh, so what, what's been your reaction overall uh, to what you've seen at CPAC? Anything kind of standing out to you? Well, I, a couple of things. I think one thing that uh, you've probably heard, but I will repeat, Brian, um, there are probably eight or 10,000 people there. Not sure what the final figure was. And out of those, uh, out of that, Al Cardenas, who's the head of the American Conservative Union, told me that oh, uh, 50% of those are under 21. Under 21? <laughs> under 21. Under 21. Uh, that is unbelievable. Uh, now, so, now. And, and it's a very, um, you know, I think that you and I, because we are in the weeds with these issues every day, it can be so discouraging and discouraging for our listeners and I was actually interviewed by Media Matters uh, when I first got there Thursday, uh, Wednesday, I guess it was, and uh, he asked me, you know, what is the mood of conservative media? And I had to say to him, honestly, we are ginned up. We are on, we are energized. We are on it. We are all over it. And um, so, and, and I actually did witness that. I think that um, conservative talk radio and conservative media is not lacking in energy. We are enthused. We're overwhelmed, no question about it. But I don't think we've lost motivation. And so that's when I saw CPAC. I saw a lot of enthusiasm, motivation. Uh, um, and so that in itself is encouraging, Brian. It's not lethargy. You know, it could be apathy. It could be lethargy, but it's neither of those things. Well, you know, it's interesting, Sandy, you talk about it. I mean, I, I had no idea that half of them were under 21. I, I had read somewhere that half of them were under, like, I thought, I thought I'd read 25, but under 21, that's just phenomenal because these are college kids and maybe even some that are still uh, even in high school. You know, and what we hear, uh, you know, I was saying in the early part of the program, Sandy, that, that we don't need to worry about the GOP trying to modernize because the truth is always modern. The truth is always contemporary. The truth never goes out of style. You know, and we're, we're constantly told we've lost the younger generation. Millennials, they're gone. We have no hope of getting them back. They're gone on gay marriage. No chance. We just have to accept it as reality and move on. But what you're seeing there is a lot of enthusiasm among these millennials, the 18 to 29-year-olds, for conservative values. You know, you asked me about the speakers, and that kind of reminds me of something that Rubio said. I hope you can hear me fine. I can hear you just fine. Okay. Marco Rubio, in part of his speech, said yesterday that um, he said, I know what the I, w- I know what um, the mainstream media is going to say about this speech. They're going to say he didn't say anything new. You know, he just said the same old thing. He said, well, I, I have news for you. There's the, the news is that America, the principles of America, are ever new, and that's what I speak about. You know, we don't have to invent new things because what we have is great, and we want to recapture it. So it was uh, – he did a great job, uh, Brian. He really did. Uh, very, very energetic. Very, It was a lot of fun. He talked about water. He said, never in the history of the world has water gotten so much press. <laughs> <laughs> One last and, question. Uh, One last question, Sandy, before I let you go. Can you hear me all right? Yes, I can, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, just one last question. Um, I'm a little concerned about where Rand Paul is coming from on the marriage issue. I've talked about this earlier in the program today. 
where he wants to get government out of marriage kind of virtually all together and just make a kind of a legal contract between any two people. I have grave concerns about that. It seems like that's going to devalue the institution of marriage. We're going to have fewer people getting married. You know, if Ray and Earl can do it and Raylene and Earlene can do it, it just diminishes the value of it. And that's going to be bad for kids because they're going to be growing up in un- increasingly unstable environments. I'm, I don't see how you can keep the government out of it anyway if you get a divorce or whatever they're going to call it. Somebody's going to have to decide who get the kids and, and how the property is going to be divided up. So as a conservative standard, and that's, you know, I, I like a lot about Rand Paul, but that's, that's one of the major hitches I've got right now in thinking about him as a candidate in 2016. What's your take on all that? Well, it's interesting that you say that because yesterday when I heard him speak, he did a great job. There's no question about it. And I just, we just, uh, the other organization I worked for hosted it at a lunch in Chicago a couple of weeks ago. And he did a great job. And he says some wonderful things. I love his spirit, his spunk. I love the way he's challenging. Uh, he challenged on the Senate floor and the filibuster. I love how he's challenging the old guard. And, and all of that is good. I do have deep concerns, not only about, it's just not just marriage, it's all the moral issues because he is libertarian at heart. And uh, kids are, kids want that because mm-hmm. they don't want any kind of moral constraint. And, uh, of course, you know that I, I think that the federal government has every right to define marriage. I, I believe that they do. We certainly did that when Utah wanted to become a state and polygamy was an issue. Uh, I don't know if you know the history of that, but oh, yeah. there, is a, there is precedence for the, for the, the federal government uh, defining marriage in order to earlier allow a state to become a part of the union. Right. I am concerned about Rand. I'm concerned also about his views on uh, um, the military, on uh, uh, enemy combatants. He said some things yesterday that were concerning to me. Mm-hmm. And so I would say I have a caution. We have to hear him. He's got to be vetted. He's got a few years here, but I do have a very, a very big caution sign as we, uh, as we hear him kind of unfold his ideas. So what? just be on guard and be wary. That's what we have to be with all of them. I mean, with uh, Marco Rubio, I'm concerned about uh, his taking part in this really horrible, from my perspective, gang of uh, aid in the Senate with the John McCain and Charles Schumer and Dick Durbin. I, I just wish he, I don't understand. Uh, I don't like it. And I think uh, Marco's kind of showing his youth by getting kind of tangled in that web. Uh, but so we'll just see we'll, uh, how all this shakes out. We have to be really smart about who it is we embrace uh, in the future. No question well, about it. One last uh, statement, Sandy, and I'll let you respond to this, and then I will let you go. One of the encouraging things to me about CPAC is that we've got a deep bench. So we may have problems with one candidate or another, but it looks like we're going to have a pretty good range of very qualified candidates to choose from in 2016. And I look at across at the Democrats, and I just see their bench is really shallow. So we got a lot of good guys to choose between, and we ought to be encouraged by that. Oh, absolutely. And the thing that we have to do as conservatives, and I say conservatives, not Republicans, we have to unite around a candidate. We cannot continue to fragment in these primaries and divide the primaries like four ways, five ways between really good candidates. We've got to learn to agree and cooperate with each other. And, uh, and that's really important. It has to happen early, not late. Hmm. And so that's just my word of wisdom for today, Brian, as we go forward. Because we do have to take back uh, the Senate. We have to take back, uh, we have to maintain the House. We have to take back the House. I would argue that's even a point yeah. to be made from uh, some of those that are just really intent more on being like uh, Democrats than they are really embracing the conservative platform. Yeah. So All right, we Sandy. have to be diligent. Our guest has been Sandy Rios. She's the host of Sandy in the Morning right here on AFR Talk. Sandy Rios in the Morning. Sandy, thanks for taking time to be uh, with us, and we'll let you get back to your plane so uh, that you can uh, be airborne whenever the impact of the sequester wears <laughs> Someday. off. Someday. All right. <laughs> okay. Sequestration is over. Thank you, Sandy. All right. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Brian. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Okay, you too. That's uh, Sandy Rios, a colleague and fellow host of a talk program right here on American Family Radio uh, Talk Network. You know, and, and I think it is encouraging that we've got such a deep bench. We, I think we all ought to be encouraged by that, that, you know, you got a Bobby Jindal, you got a Paul Ryan, maybe you got a problem with, with Marco Rubio. I've got, I'm, I'm with Sandy on Marco Rubio. I don't know what he's doing with this Amnesty 8. You know, I, I look at this, and, and strategically, I, I, don't, I don't even think it's smart. I, I think it looks to me like Marco Rubio has been listening to consultants or people that are 
beating the drums about how the GOP has got to moderate its message to get Hispanics. And, you know, it's just not working. I was looking at Marco Rubio's poll numbers with Hillary Clinton against Hillary Clinton. He's upside down 60-34 with Latinos. He is a Latino. He is a Hispanic. And this was after he came out for amnesty. And so I think the reality is that that Hispanics that vote, they're just oriented toward big government. They're used to that in the countries they come from. That's kind of their mindset. You know, that, that charity is, is a function of government. They are going to come to the United States, excuse me, in part because it's a richer country than where they came from. So they think that there is the prospect of being able to get more welfare benefits in the United States than where they came from. And a lot of that is the magnet that draws them to these shores. They're not even that concerned about voting. You know, back in 1986, when Ronald Reagan granted amnesty to 3 million illegal immigrants, only 41% of them ever bothered. This is as of today. Only 41% of them. Well, it was over the next 20 years, so maybe some have since. But over the next 20 years, only 41% of them even bothered to become citizens. They, they, they weren't primarily interested in becoming citizens and voting. They just wanted to get here for the opportunity and for the benefits. Well, you are listening to Focal Point on AFR Talk. We'll open up the phones going into the next hour. 888-589-8840. I'm going to let you go a little bit early and rest my throat. We'll see you right back after the news. Focal Point AFR Talk. 